previously on Quest Friends. Contraband detected. Dozens of books. You realize, oh, all books are outlawed here, and you will get severely ex punished, probably ex No, you will get definitely expelled if you're caught with books. No. Hopper groans out loud, just like, ah. With this payment, I believe I can be of assistance. Oh, who was uh, so the back door that you can use to access all these things? Tattertop has given one key. Who wants it? I'm going to take it from him because we had that conversation. To give it to Zoe? I was going to vote that as well. Yeah. But if I recall correctly, there was this little robot who you had saved from last episode and who, you know, even if you got him an ID, couldn't really, unless you like weekend at Bernie's, <laughs> it, like couldn't appear to like use it. So what the hell did you do with this robot boy? All right, it is now morning of day two on the Prodigious. Congratulations, we have made it to the morning of day two. So you're back in the dining hall. It is still a scramble, although there are no scrambled ogs, which are ninth world eggs. They're ostrich eggs. <laughs> Just the shoes, Uggs. <laughs> <laughs> there are scrambled Uggs. <laughs> no scrambled ogs. Some scrambled Uggs, but nobody likes those. At some point, two students started fighting over an og over easy. So they do have some ogs. And this fight does not go over easy because a Zev just comes in and using its six arms, sucker punches both of them. And you can just see them get dragged out of the room. <laughs> Hopper makes the exact face I just made, which is incredulous at, at just the obvious brutality ex ex exhibited by these Zev. So everyone's having breakfast. Uh, Jesse is almost like our dog, Charlie where they're very tired and their face is on the uh, on the table and they just close their eyes and then they open them up and they're like trying to keep alert of everyone and then they're sleeping. Everett is brooding in a corner. In fact, uh, he found the place where the most corners converged and that is where he is brooding. Uh, Zoe is great. Zoe's hanging out with, uh, with Megan and she's fashioned her hair to make the thin shapes that Megan's hair makes. Zoe's has fashioned her hair to be synonymous. And then there is... <laughs> and then there is is Misha, Hop, and Ellie. And you're all at the table together. And how how are you feeling this morning? Um, Hop, when he got back to his room, he he eventually fell asleep, but a fitful, like maybe two hour long bout of sleep. So he didn't really sleep at all that night. Uh he's got like some shadow. He he just doesn't look great, is what I'm saying. He looks tired. But he also he's thinking about something. He looks tired but thoughtful. Except for the Zev, the Zev just just sucker punching these two kids fighting over a single og over easy. That was the only thing that roused him from his thoughtful state. Do you want to talk about what he's thinking about? Um, well, he was a little overwhelmed by the events of last night because first of all, there's a time bomb on the ship that is the engine. He doesn't know what to do about that. He worries. <laughs> He's 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 not in like a good competent place, but he can't help himself from worrying and trying to help. And then he's also thinking about Seraphinia Delphine Willow. There's a <laughs> Uh, let me pull up the name. I got two of those right. Uh, you, yeah, you did. Seraphine, Princess Seraphinia Delilah Willow Brackleberry. Delilah. He's thinking about Princess Seraphinia Delilah Willow Brackleberry because he's a little bit afraid about this engine that's on the ship. But he also feels like this woman that he met has a pretty good handle on it, despite not having a handle on it at all when he was in the room with her last night. He feels... Like he trusts her. Is he familiar with uh, why she would be called princess at all? He is not. That threw him for a loop because, you know, he was in his pajamas, had soot in his face. His hair is his like bed head, not hat hair. So it's real messy and sticks straight up in the back. He wasn't he wasn't expecting to meet a princess and he doesn't feel like he made a very good impression. But that's fine. Meanwhile, Ellie, how do you feel about your own princess or professor? How do you feel about your your uh, your professor? Um, I'm assuming that's what Ellie's thinking about. Yes, she is 
found something most... scarier than the ship. Yeah, exactly. She's mostly consumed by that. She did when she got to the scramble. She would have seen Hop and checked to see if he had a plate in front of him. And if he didn't... Is my boy eating? <laughs> basically, that's what she did yesterday. And she's still not, like, convinced that he's going to take care of himself. You're right. He probably would not <laughs> if someone didn't just give him food. All right. So Hop probably didn't have a plate in front of him. And so she would go and just grab a bunch of food and set it down roughly in front of him. She'd have a plate for herself, but she'd kind of pick at it because she's still not feeling that great. And now there are other things that are making her feel nauseous. <laughs> and it's Ray. <laughs> And then Ari, how how how's Misha doing? What's Misha up to? Well, I guess Misha's sitting with with the crew just to keep company. But first thing, they, they're gonna notice that Hop is not wearing his hat, but they're not gonna mention it, and they're just gonna like be fine with that. <laughs> Great, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I mean, they're not. I mean, they, they like you know, it's it's fine. They they just they they don't have Copper doesn't have to wear the hat. He loves the hat. He just no. It's it, it wasn't a guilt trip. You, I promise. It... <laughs> oh no, Hopper just feels guilty. I don't. Okay, good. <laughs> Hopper does. Yeah. So they're gonna notice that, but they're not gonna mention it. And then they're they're gonna be a bit worried. What they're gonna be worried about is that when well, two things. One is uh, they're gonna notice that Jesse's kind of tired, and so they feel really guilty about it being their fault. They might even try and mention this to Ellie because they don't know how to. Uh, they, they need like advice to not keep this going for the rest of the trip because they don't want Jesse to be actually non-functioning. But before that, they are also a little bit confused as to why Shock is not here, even though Everett is here. So they might also reach to Shock, but I don't want to like expand scenes. So I don't know what to do. Ari, please. Reach out to Shock. Okay, so they're gonna reach out to Shock and say, Um, Shock, I do believe breakfast is ready. So I was wondering, where were you and if I could be of any assistance? Otherwise, I believe your food might not get eaten and you need that to having energy for the classes this morning. Ah! <laughs> ah! So... It's the morning. Everyone's gone for breakfast. Everett has finally uh, lumbered out of bed. And Shock, your mind is just thinking. You're like, I can't help Everett. I couldn't help Lowell, assuming he wanted to be helped at all. I don't know what's going on with him. Well, maybe I can, maybe there is somebody I can help, though. And so you take up the backpack and you spill out its contents. And amidst uh, just a metric crap ton of spray flesh and spray metal, out comes a small robot. The robot you saved from the Zev when you first entered Key back in part two. He is a small, boxy humanoid robot with a head that has big, glowy eyes. They kind of look like light bulbs. He has two prong grabber arms on hose like arms, tiny little shoes. And then this robot inside of your backpack has a little backpack of his own. <laughs> it looks very similar to yours. It's precious. Shock. Shock would have done this with this sort of faux secrecy. Like, this clear smiles, but it's just like looking around in a sort of exaggerated way, like, oh, I hope no one sees me taking this small robot child out of this bag, and then, and then sets him out on the table and gets to work. All right, and since we are science fiction, uh, we need in, in every series at least one obligatory jargon-filled scene. <laughs> oh, Oh, I was born ready for this talky and techy bullshit. Step aside. So Shock spreads out his tools and harkens back to lessons learned long ago, far away in the Wheel of Oz, when an old machine named Jaquel taught him about machine life, all the various components it can be made up of. And so he begins with a quick analysis of things. You know, trying to see, is this some sort of self-replicating metallic organism? Is this just purely mechanical combustion? What are we talking about here? Is there some sort of... Um, 
force reactor fuel in this little fellow and determining that it's a fairly, fairly standard, fairly ancient build. Circuit boards, little, little nuclear battery, all that jazz. Uh, Shock is going to take out his most advanced tool, the screwdriver, and begin by unscrewing the uh, the back to uh, do a little bit of, um, let's say he's got to realign those electrons. Yeah, that's the jargon. I'm sorry, I walked into this a lot more confidently. Those electrons. <laughs> he's got an electron <laughs> arthro- eh, arthroscope. Electron arthroscope. Nailed it. Did I did the jargon. There's a little stutter. It doesn't make too loud of sounds, because again, this robot, he's very small. But eventually the eyes light up, he leans up, he looks at you, and he says, The fuck are you? Uh, uh, hello, small friend. My name's Shock. The small robot looks around. This doesn't look like a street or outside or key. So, Shock, Shock, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna tell a buddy what's going on? Oh, y- yeah. So, when we were passing by, I saw you in the streets. You weren't moving, and people were stepping on you. So I took you away from there. Uh, we got on an airship, because that was where we were going. And I worked on fixing you, and now I have. What? What do you, what, what? What do you mean about in Kia? You just took me off the street? You were in trouble. Well, you just, you just, you just saw me on the street in Kia. We're like, oh man, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm going to take this robot, put it on a boat. That's what the robot wants, to be on a freaking boat, not where it was before. What do you mean I'm on a boat, man? You weren't even <laughs> conscious. You were just in the street. It was a long con. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> What, what, what? You barely know me. What do you mean you don't believe me? I should have started with, with, with a blank slate. You should believe everything that I don't need this. I don't need this. And he starts collecting his backpack, puts it on <laughs> real angrily. Well, well, you don't have to stay with us, but I was kind of interested in hearing your story and who you are and where you're from. I, I don't even know your name. Who wants to know? <laughs> A shock, my, myself. Yeah, but what, what, what are you like? A, like a wizard hobo? Is that what this is? Is that what this is? And he gestures to all of you. I well, I do live in the wilderness a lot, <laughs> and I am a wizard. But no, I'm I'm a nano, and I shock does this very intentionally through a telepathic link opening up with this robot whose name he doesn't know. Is like I can also speak to machines' minds. <laughs> So the small robot will kind of recoil a little bit at the mental link and then go, sorry, there was like a weird interference there. Oh, did, did the signal Oh no, there lock, it is again. Did the signal not go through? No, the all the guy keeps happening. You're, you're lying to make me feel That's upset. That's so weird. I guess your link is broken. You're lying to make me feel upset. I can <laughs> tell what you're doing here. He's already broken the link. <laughs> okay. And now it's out loud again. And Shock is gesturing with his arms out to the side because that's the thing I, Tom, do when distressed. You can just sit here in your boat room and reflect on what you've done. And then <laughs> Peter Patter's out of the room on his little boots. What's your name? What's your name? As he shouts down the hallway in like the SpongeBob alternate capital letters meme. At that instant, Shock will both mentally and audibly go, Ah! (laughs) So we don't know what the name of this robot child is, but we, as the audience and the players, know who he is. So Shock, do you want to explain one of your new abilities you have not told us about yet? Yes. There was another power made in secret. At tier four, Shock's focus talks to machines. At tier four, gives an ability called Machine Companion. The text says you create, but we've decided to take some liberties with this. We've taken so many liberties with this. If you want, if you want the full stats, look on the website because I've completely changed how uh, companions work. Oh yeah, that's right. Is anything that it says on my sheet right now accurate? Even uh, level three is the accurate part. Yeah. Okay, so well, you create a level three animate intelligent machine that accompanies you and acts as you direct. Theoretically. <laughs> uh, the text goes on to say some mechanical stuff that probably is no longer true. In the baseline game, it can be replaced if it's destroyed, but we've, we're not 
not gonna deal with that, I don't think. This robot is, unless it's like a, a plot thing where like someone's gonna target the robot in all combat and things, he's just gonna be, he's gonna be safe. Yeah, that's reasonable. But yeah, I have a small friend, question mark. <laughs> Fuck you. And Hallie will, Hallie will play the small friend because we, we want to take a page out of Predation's book. All right, anything else before I segue? I think that was a pretty good cut since we matched it up with uh, Misha giving a call. Yeah, it worked out really nicely. All right, so you all get back to the table. You you sit down and you hear over the loudspeakers. Good morning, students. I hope you had a good evening. And today, the temperature is 75 degrees. And we are moving northeast at a- All right, listen up, you little shits. You don't need to know where we're going. Doesn't matter. What you gotta think about is your fucking classes, all right? So what you gotta do, open up that wing pal. And then a student, like, picks up a wing pal. And you uh, hear Virgil say as a camera shifts over. No, not you, Josie. I don't care if you two are in love or whatever. You got your own wing pal. You got your own classes. Look at your own. So when you're going to open up the wind pal, it's going to tell you where you go, who you see, all right? So I don't want any nonsense about how you're lost. You're going to follow it. It's going to get you to your classes. Open it already. A shock will open it, startled by this angry Jarvis. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, so you open up your wing pals, and each of you gets like a little Game Boy style mini game to show you what class you're in. So it's like, you know, pew, 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 pew. <laughs> you, you all play Space Invaders. Ellie will hand hers to someone else to play the game for her yeah. and like glare at it and then take it back when they're finished. Chalk will do it. Chalk will play the game for her. Chalk, you go and play Ellie's game and you get something kind of weird. Oh no. <laughs> oh, Ellie Badge, it says you're teaching the music class. I'm what? Welcome to the announcement break for Quest Friends Episode 41, Crime and Courtship, Part 6. I am Kyle, your GM, and our intro and outro music is Friends and Hitoshio, both by Miracle of Sound. We've got two Patreon shoutouts for you today. Again, Patreon shoutouts go to Patreon supporters who support at a $5 level or above. I've already got the NPCs up here and one of them's really barking to get started, so let's just get going with that. Hi, 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 this is me, this is FaZe. You know, the, the dog, the one that Ellie had in her memory? It's me. I'm the one that's here. So I'm here to shout out FaZe. That's the, that's the one that I'm named after, right? It, it's not my reflection this time. This is the one I'm actually named after. Okay, yeah, I was told this is the one I was named after. This is a shout out for FaZe, who gave me my name. And FaZe just wants to say that no matter who you are, and no matter how you feel, you're just, you're valid how you are. And, and what makes you feel comfortable is, is, is good. And it's, it's what you should do. And it's what you should be. And if anyone says anything otherwise, they're a bunch of dingleberries. <sighs> now I'm really hungry for berries. Is that something dogs can eat? Berries. Can dogs eat? Alright, so according to madaboutberries.com, a completely unbiased source, they can. So, yeah, no, I think I'm gonna go eat some berries. Thank you, face. Oh, and the last thing, y'all are valid. Oh, okay, uh, he just, he just ran off. So I guess I, Zoe, will go for, uh, we'll, we'll do the next one. So our next one is for Berto, and he wants me to talk about a book that I've been reading lately. It's about a little girl with golden eyes, and she goes on adventures with her dad, and they find lots of treasures. And sometimes it's a little bit scary, but every time they know that they're good, they just gotta stick together, and then they'll make it through okay at the end every time, no matter how scary it is. And then they got lots of treasures at the end too, which is really fun. Uh, this book is called Piper and the Dad. I really, really like it. I can tell that Piper and the dad love each other a whole lot, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. So thank you so much for having me talk about this book. 
Uh, thank you so much to our two Patreon supporters for those Patreon shoutouts. I'm actually having a lot of fun doing those. If you're interested in getting a Patreon shoutout, you can check us on patreon.com slash questfriends. But if that's not the kind of thing you're looking for, don't worry, because we have lots of other ways for you to spend money. That sounded a lot. That sounded real bad. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to mention is that I've released a Rouletteia module. It's called Welcome to Swagtacular Rouletteia, a Quest Friends module. It's a 20-ish or so page cipher system module, which is the base system that Numenera uses, and it basically lets you play Rouletteia. It has basic descriptions about the locations, it has in-depth descriptions for items, NPCs. If you want to be a Vasil, like Zoe, I now have mechanics so that you can be that species, or you can be a frog tar. Like Cart, the one who worked in the I can't do his voice anymore. But Cart, uh the the newsboy cat frog man thing. I mean it's called a frog tar, but you could be his species as well. There's a lot of really fun stuff in there. If you're at all interested, you can check that out at the link below. It's on Drive Through RPG, and again, it's welcome to Swagtacular Reladia, a Quest Friends module. We also have one other big, big thing that isn't out yet, but that you might be interested in. So in September of this year, to celebrate our second anniversary, Quest Friends is going to be doing something completely unlike anything we've done before. We're going to be releasing a Kickstarter. I can't really tell you the details right now, but if you follow our social media accounts, in particular our Twitter, every Saturday we'll be releasing just a little bit more information about the project using the hashtag Kickstarter Saturday. It's a really exciting project. It is something that I've wanted to do since we started the show, but we, we honestly, I'm just baffled. We're gonna potentially be able to do it in the first place. So keep an eye on that. And if you're listening in the future and you're like, wow, it's September right now, check later episodes descriptions, check our feeds. If the Kickstarter is up, I will have definitely put it as the like main tagged post on Twitter. So please, please, please keep an eye out for that. Finally, I wanted to give name shoutouts because we have two more suspects that appear this episode, and both of them are named after listeners. So the first one is named after at Hard Goldstone on Twitter, and the second one is named after at Sir underscore Kent underscore M on Twitter. And I just want to make it one thing perfectly clear that I think both of these people are very sweet and they're very nice. Their names just gave me very, very fun ideas for characters that I decided to roll with. So I really, really hope you like your characters who will be appearing in the second half of this episode. Okay, that is all that I have for today. If you're following along with The Cookie 2, the next episode of that will release on Monday, July 29th, and the next episode of our main campaign will be releasing on Monday, August 5th. I will see you then. I'd like to set the scene. Please do. The only scene setting I have is just someone tuning a tuba. <laughs> From now on, you're not allowed to insert any actual tuba noises. You have to make them all. <laughs> um, Ellie... <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Ellie stands in front of these students. And is completely silent, staring at them with huge, horrified, deer-in-the-headlights eyes. <coughs> Hello, ch children of my class. Hello! Hello. I'm not a kid. I am here to teach you the music. And then you just hear a fish voice go, Woo! <laughs> music! I am glad to see you are excited for me to teach you the music that I know, because I'm a teacher. I, 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 I do teaching. 
I, I do the professor. Well, I don't. It... Oh, <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and enlightenment will strike. Why don't one of you tell me what you have learned? <laughs> And suddenly you just see a little flappy arm wave up and you hear, ooh, ooh, ooh. You. Um, okay. Uh, and Megan raises up and says, Hi, everyone. My name is Megan. I come from the Sea Kingdom of Gon. And, uh, a fun fact about me is that I really like music. <laughs> 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 and then Ellie gets another strike of inspiration on how to do this teaching thing. Oh, no. Get to know you activities. <laughs> <laughs> they always take up so much time. Nobody wants to do them, but it's great for the teacher. <laughs> Say hi to two other students and show them the instrument you play. There's a flurry of activity, and you can see people have quickly taken out their bricks and are marking them down. This actually, this takes up the whole hour. People are very thorough about it. And so you just see all these people moving around, and you, they're just punctuated by uh, Megan, who still seems to be, like, practicing something. So you just hear a You just hear, like, a tuba playing music to the background of all this, uh, all this stuff. And at the end, you just get, like, pelted by a pile of bricks as they all show that they did their work with everyone. <laughs> but there are two things I want to point out. The first one is in between bursts of Megan tuning and playing her tuba, you could swear you hear the rustling of paper. Okay, I would like to try to get a peek at what Megan is reading because I have a sneaking suspicion of where she got whatever she has. I want you to roll me a perception or a stealth. I'm going to pretend like I'm a teacher who is wandering around and feels that it's important that the students are doing this activity. Cool, cool, cool. Roll deception then. Okay, great. Um, Do you have any bonuses in that? I am trained in deception. Woo! <gasps> 17! Woo! Yes, you see a piece of sheet music for a song called The Sunshine Junction. <laughs> I would like to, and I don't know if I need to roll a separate deception for this, but I'd like to go in in the guise of like checking to see what Megan's playing on her tuba to like kind of talk quietly to her. Megan. The papers quickly get uh, shuffled into the tuba itself. Uh, yeah. Hi, 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 Professor uh, Ellie. It's really great to see you again. I'll be honest, you didn't quite look like the professor type. Not that it was an insult, just like, uh... Surprise, Professor! <laughs> well, I can stay in the class, right? That wasn't insulting? No, you can, you can, you can stay in the class, Megan. Uh, actually, I just wanted to let you know, you might want to hide those papers better next time. <laughs> I'm gonna say roll and intimidate. Yeah, roll... How do you want Megan to feel? But I'm not trying to intimidate Megan. Oh, you're trying to be supportive? Well, I don't think that it's a good thing that they're not allowed to have papers on. But Ellie will kind of want, on multiple levels, to establish, like, a positive connection with Megan. Because Zoe really, really likes Megan. And so Ellie wants to be, like, supportive of Zoe having new friends. <laughs> Are you just being the cool mom? She's I must be my daughter's friend's friend. No, she just, she she doesn't want to intimidate. Okay. And uh, that's why. Okay, in that case, I'm going to say it works. And Megan says, oh, okay, thank you, professor. I'll be more careful about the bricks. And she goes to wink, but she doesn't. Vargellan in my world can't blink. So you just a head nod to her side. And you are now at, uh, you now have one heart with Megan. Dun, 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 as I, dun, dun, dun. as I begin to flee the group of students again, I want to tell Megan to, at her wink, you tried. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I'm not. I'm never gonna get sick of this laugh. Uh, who will get sick of that laugh though is Everett, and that's the one last thing I want to touch on before we move on. Is you notice after you've gotten all the bricks and everyone's gotten it ba- and everyone's gotten back to you that Everett has been sulking in the corner the whole time and just staring at the door. Well, yeah, and I wanted to try to talk to him after class, but I, A, don't think we have time, and B, think he wouldn't be receptive, even though I really want to talk to him. And C, by the time the bell, which is just Virgil going, (laughs) by the time that rings, he's already gone. All right, so pew, 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 pew. All right, so we're spiraling around. We've got three more games being played. Shock is back on his, as are um, um, Misha and Hop. Hop, you'd imagine Hop would be doing well, but... Would you? (laughs) Well, I feel like... The thing is, I feel like Hop has a very slow but very strong learning curve where he's sitting there and you just keep dying and you're, like, trying to figure out, all right, what are the specific patterns of how this works? I thought it was Space Invaders. It is. It's Dark Souls now. Yeah, you get the Dark Souls of space invaders (laughs) how fucking dare you say this on a podcast that will go on the internet kyle (laughs) so the uh the and and if if you want you could probably ask misha for help yeah actually he will probably just has me is misha clearly winning at the game misha how are you doing at your space invaders um well, I imagine that Misha is probably doing well because they are really enjoying it. But I don't know. It's up to you to decide. Yeah, Misha's doing well. I'm going to say Misha hasn't won yet just because Misha's recognized the win condition and wants to keep playing. Yes, I, I actually thought that if there's like a bonus level or something, just playing that. Like Misha's- The thing is that if Misha's still actively playing their game, he would hand it to Shock, who is finished. Okay, so uh, you're, yeah, you're all playing your Space Invaders, which in this world is called Zev Cleanup. It takes place in the Zev Gardens, and you're discovering, with air quotes, the Zev. You'll hand yours to Shock, but uh, I'm not sure how responsive Shock will be to that, because Shock, you just got your class. What are you taking? I, um, Simon, Mm -hmm. what does, what does physical education mean? Oh, it means, um, like sports and activities and, and, and physical stuff. Oh, I guess it never occurred to me that's a thing you would learn in a school. Yeah, it's a requirement to make sure the kids are active. It's, it's like the rest of the school. I'm a very active boy. I don't need to do more things. I'm a very active boy. <laughs> very active boy. <laughs> okay, so Tom, I want you to roll me a mic check. My dice have been very good to me lately. Never say that. I got a six. Never say that. <laughs> it's the six. You got six. You got six. Cool. So, okay, so there are about... 14 anines in your class. <laughs> you outpace one of them. And it's just the one that isn't that into it. It's just walking. So, Shock, you are <sighs> slowly making your way around this uh, track. So you are in the gymatorium. A bunch of the cleaning bots have um, reformed and they've made kind of an impromptu track. And you're uh, running the laps before class starts proper. <laughs> class starts <laughs> you're being outpaced by these anines in gym shorts and with blinking ear tags who are just running past you just laughing all to themselves and how is shock feeling how is our active boy doing right now <laughs> i didn't have to run for my life as much as i have right now <sighs> <sighs> Punchy Muffin, he hasn't even done like a quarter of a lap. It's just like <laughs> literally. I I don't feel very. I, these Indians are like built for running on the plains. Oh god, I actually made myself lightheaded with my heavy breathing. Oof. <laughs> uh, these Indians are like they're 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 they were born to run run around on grasslands, right? So shock shock is telling himself this. <laughs> Like it's this is not this is a normal occurrence for a human to be outrun by an anine. That's that's a thing that happens. The machinery's in his brain, not in his legs. 
What's not a normal occurrence is for you to be outrun by another human who just appears to be speed walking. Because <laughs> in addition to the Anines, you see with his kind of like hands in his pockets, you see this dude bro wearing a polo shirt and a monocle that is really just half of a pair of sunglasses just strolling around like looking at his wing pal like it's a like it's a cell phone. <laughs> Chuck between gasps for breath, which I'll stop ASMRing into my mic. <laughs> it's just gonna be like, who, who is this tacky yet strong boy? You just hear the pack of anines go, anine! Wait, can't they talk with the ear tags? I haven't decided yet if they can talk. That, that wasn't, that was shocked just in character being just generally confused. And then as you say that, you hear a voice say, yeah, bro, they can, but sheep like this like staying with what they know. And you turn up and you see the dude bro looking down at you. Uh, because I'm assuming I just in my head shock is kind of just like like fallen on the ground from exhaustion and he like lazily puts his hand down and he's like Sir Cantrum Esquire Shock will take the hand and stand up straighter and be like I my name is Shock oh I'm I'm really quite an impressive wizard just not used to running oh you seem to do this uh physical education thing more often in your life. Oh. Yeah, a bit. A few reps here and there. You know, just to keep my body as strong as my brain. I'm kind of a, a an intellectual of sorts. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a thinker, free spirit, not like these sheep, but I uh, gotta keep the uh, uh, body toned. And Chuck will look the body up and down. Not not so much as like a, like checking him out thing, but just as like, a, is this what they speak of when they speak of bods? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, um, I'm new to this whole s- school in the sky thing, but um, I wouldn't mind talking more with a three thinker such as yourself. And he just points to you and says, now that's the spirit, man. Nah, you want to think free? You know, these these uh, fake exercise guys don't realize that you got to be toned in the mind as well as the pecs. <laughs> also, as a, as a side note, Kyle, when Kyle does the Sir Kentrum character, he has just the shittiest asshole face I have ever seen. And it's it, it it's upsetting me so much more than I expected it would. <laughs> all right. And then suddenly you hear another whistle and all the needs and the robots go to the front of the class. And Kentrum says, hey, it'll be later, though, buddy. Let's go meet the new teacher. I hope he's cool. And so you walk up and and uh, you make your way to the front of the classroom and you see a handful of things. On one hand, an empty space with nothing but a rope and nothing to catch you if you fall. No. But that's only the second scariest thing in the room. Oh. <laughs> because next to it, you see your professor. She stands on tall heels with a green professional business suit. Mm-mm. No. And she turns over to all of you, and your professor, Vera Leeni, says, Thank you for your patience, students. Today we are going to go through the strife of physical education. Through combat, we are going to evolve our bodies, and we are going to change into better forms of ourselves. And to demonstrate our growth, We are going to start with, and she points to the rope, the rope. And you just hear the Aneans, which is normally going, Aneen, go, the rope, the rope, the rope, the rope. Now, it might look intimidating to some of you now, and and she looks at you, Shock. It is a very nasty fall. (laughs) But we learn to pick ourselves up again, and by the end of this semester, I promise you, you'll either be able to climb that rope, or you'll have a very sturdy back. Do we have any volunteers? And all the Aeneans immediately raise their hand, and Sir Kentrum just looks at you, and looks at them and, like, scoffs, like, huh, losers. Uh, Shock. Shock knows what he has to do, only he doesn't know if he has the strength to do it. 
Will you help me, Han Solo? <laughs> Do you want to? You've got one heart with Sir Kensham. Do you want to lose that heart by becoming a poser like everyone else? <laughs> oh, I think I misread the situation. Shock will, trying to follow his cue, cross his arms and be like, huh, yeah, I have nothing to prove to th this crowd of Anines and our new professor, Thera Leany. <laughs> Dude, you know the professor's name? <laughs> Uh, it was on... Oh, Shock has a moment of brilliance. Yeah. Now, I didn't do this myself, but some people I know definitely got into a fight with the teacher. Yeah, we we fought teachers before. We'll do it again. I hear it was a really tough fight, too. Someone hit the teacher with a chair. Roll me deception. Isn't... Technically a deception. It's not quite a lie. That's true. Roll me. It's taking a penalty regardless. A stretching of the truth. <laughs> An artist's reinterpretation. That's what we'll call this roll. Heart of the cards. Heart of the cards. It occurs to me I could have spent effort on this roll. How does an 11 do? You have any XP you want to use on that? Do I? That's a good question. I do. So I'll, I'll burn my one XP. Uh, and this time, this time, let's use some of my copious amounts of effort. In fact, I can just spend intellect effort for free. So let's actually spend two levels of effort uh, on this, which costs me a single point of intellect. So it's a 10 this time, but now I have two levels of effort, making it better. So it's good now, right? Sir Kentrum's going to take his monocle and he's going to put it down and he's going to kind of raise his eyebrow at you. Dude. Tryhards like that aren't going to be the popular kids that get on the proligarchy. Trust me. And he puts his monocle back and he leans back. Shock will do like a pouty face. Like, eh. I did the human custom thing of the bad boy. <laughs> he says that under his breath, even though I shouted it just now. And either because she saw that you were stewing and wanted to let you sit in it, or because she didn't want to appear too suspicious, Vera actually doesn't call on you first. And she lets the Aeneans go, and you just see this dog pile of 14 Aeneans try to climb their way to the top of the uh, oh God, rope. No, Really, they're just climbing each other like World War Z. Their arms are so small. <laughs> Don't do this, Aeneans. It doesn't work out for them. And so we're uh, we're wrapping up. We're almost done. I mean, you still got your heart with Sir Kentrum because you, you stood your ground. And thou, thou art I. But before we go, there is one more thing that you must do. You walk up and you just look up at this rope that's so high in the air. It doesn't matter how tall it is because to you it feels like a skyscraper. And she just leans over to you and she quietly says, You know, there are worse ways to learn how effective our methods are. What if they don't, though? <sighs> nice one, Shock. Got him real good. <laughs> she's, gonna, she's just going to nudge you forward and say, well, you cannot know until you have tried. So please, Shock, try. Shock will do an audible gulp and try to climb the rope. What's your method? Before we get into this, I want to know your method for climbing this rope. M method? Is there a method to climbing? Actually, that, that, I feel like that's almost a thing Shock would say in character. Method to climbing. You just, you just, put, you just put the hand ab above the other ha hand and you do the feats and you, you, your knees you hold the the rope and you you just you wrap you you, you, you you try to hold on to the rope real tight with all parts of your body and you just pull yourself up right <laughs> so you know how in video games sometimes they're like oh here are all the options you have but you haven't fit certain requirements so certain options are locked off Tom's speech just locked off the option that said climb the rope using intellect. <laughs> and so the only option left is climb the rope using might. Well, I mean, that was I never assumed there would be an option to climb using intellect because this is a rope. This is a thing that scares even Tom, the real person. <laughs> this is just awful. I, I almost feel like Kyle tailored this nightmare for me. Climb that rope. All right, so I would like, how much is that? Are you seeing how many levels of effort you can use to consume your entire might pool? <laughs> yes, maybe. 
<laughs> I could use I could do four levels of effort consuming all nine of my might points, but No, Tom, Tom, please, please do it. You want me to use all of my effort? Yep. Okay, then Shock spends four levels of effort consuming all nine of his might points. He will be, regardless of what happens here, he will be impaired at the end of this. Heart of the cards. Heart of the cards. A 15. Shock, how does it feel as you triumphantly climb this rope? So Shock, Shock perhaps heard some sort of triumphant music in his head. Maybe I'll make a man out of you from Mulan. (laughs) Perhaps it was just, I swear I had another song in my head. Whatever, I've got nothing. But Shock goes into this sort of fugue state. He doesn't really remember what happened between the bottom and the top of the rope, but at some point his aching limbs pull him to the top of the rope and he's free at long last. So, who do you want to give your other GM intrusion point to? I would like to give it to Hopper. Yay! Because I just, I want Hopper to have nice things. I was certain you were going to say, it's a pity XP, (laughs) so that was nice. So, a series of expressions cross Vera's face. First, bemusement, then surprise, then curiosity, then then almost pride in, uh, in shock. Shock who embraced the conflict he has with her and used it to force himself beyond what he probably would have normally. But then he gets to the top and she sees how tired and impaired he is. And just sadness and pity crosses her face because the thing about climbing a rope shock is that you have to have the strength to climb back down again. So you want to give me either figure out a way to get down or you got to give me a roll. Far step. I far step back down. (laughs) There's a silence. And then Vera just says, All right, everyone. Good work today for most of you. We will assemble again tomorrow. And she'll turn over to you, Shock, before she leaves. And she'll just say, I know we're not on the best terms, but I'm a little disappointed. You need to commit to your actions in full, or one day you will fall without your magic to protect you. Your approval means nothing to me. And Shock will leave on that fucking mic drop. As Shock is walking from the background, you know, I gotta admit, I didn't think you could do it. (laughs) (laughs) All right, you just ruined all the cred you had. I I gave you a chance and you consistently disappoint and I've met you twice. (laughs) Shock is like, that thing where someone's like sort of sunk down so they're like kind of crouching and their arms are on their knees, just panting heavily. Like Shock is drenched in sweat. (laughs) It doesn't look good right now. It's like, oh, hi. I, um, oh, I think I need some water soon. I... Yeah, that that can wait. Uh, I have a thing to say. Uh, I'm not saying that I maybe overreacted earlier, but maybe I reacted over what was called for. So, um, I'm so... I apologize. Uh, uh, and you said that um, I was broken on the street and you fixed me. So um, I guess, and his little robot mouth is struggling to say the next thing. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, my name is Ness. Pew, 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 pew. We're back. Uh, we're back again. We're at our final two games. Have you have you given it to Shock to finish for you then? I absolutely have. Okay, Shock, who's I guess true gamer boy now. He's a very active boy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Shock finally finally finishes, uh, and you're. And then I'm gonna let you decide, Shock. You can either read it out or you can hand it over to uh to Hallie. Uh, Shock will hand it back to Hopper. All right, uh, Hop will look at the wing pal and go, cooking. Yeah, okay, that could be fun. Maybe. I don't know. M- Mish is going to hear that and say, oh, do you have a class to learn how to prepare foods? Yeah. Huh. Well, that's surely something completely unappealing to me as I do not eat. <laughs> <laughs> and cannot, in fact, taste the food compliments of humans. So I would not know how to even begin to do that. Oh, I sure hope I got into either Ellie's music class or learn the physics of education with Shock. <laughs> and then they're going to continue playing their bonus level. All right, so uh, Hop and Misha, 
you're both making your way to cooking class. It is on uh, the main deck. It's actually a pretty short walk. It's right next to the kitchen. And uh, you open the door into the class and you see a variety of uh, little cooking stations. Is it like a science lab? Yeah, it's like a science lab, basically, is how I was thinking. Science lab, you each have your own cooking stations. They are filled with, like, American cheese and crackers. That somehow survived eight apocalypses? <laughs> a billion years ago. I mean, American cheese lasts forever. God, fine. But essentially, there's a lot of, like, just, you know, those very packaged, processed foods. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you don't recognize any of the students with the exception of two that stick out to you. The professor doesn't look like they're here yet. You see uh, La Adrian is actually in cooking class, and they've set up at a station. And then you also see sporting a uh, newly Dak taped on blonde mustache. Inspector Cecilos is also hard at work investigating his ingredients. So uh, yeah, let me know where you uh, where you park yourselves. Do you have any strong feelings regarding a cooking station? Uh, I have strong feelings regarding me being in this class. <laughs> I was hoping that the professor of this class was here so that I could explain the potential misunderstandings of an android that cannot cook or taste food of being in a class that necessitates those talents. I truly do not care for any of this. And Misha has been um, dragging their feet all the way towards the class. They are, oh. I, I think it's like the most visibly like actually upset that they have been since they joined oh. the party. Um, seeing Misha legitimately upset was like, you know, you might like it. You know, cooking is kind of fun. I mean, for those of us who can taste things and do need to eat, sometimes things that aren't so good on their own are better when they're paired with something else. You know, when you make it into something else. I, I suppose. For those of us who need to eat. I, I, I suppose so. I, I was not meaning to insult you or any human being on this class. I just do not understand the mixing of the foods. And I do not truly care for understanding how to do so. But... I suppose if the professor isn't here, I can wait until they are, and then I can attend to potentially switch classes. If that'll make you happier. I believe so, yes. Which is just gonna go to, like, the farthest away station and, like, slunk down. Hop will follow. So, Misha, you, uh, walk ahead. And I don't know if you noticed this or not, but Hop, you're suddenly stopped. And you hear a voice say, Oh, invest investigator accountant, if you could come over to my station, I would very much like to discuss your findings over this past evening. My my find my findings. Oh, of course. Nighttime is very time for the research, and I can tell from your eyesight that you have spent many, many hours up. I'm assuming very hard at research with your investigations, of course. I discovered a new thing last night. Yeah. Yeah, I do investigating. And by this point, you've gone back to Cecilosa's station. He just like yanked Hopper back. Yeah, that's fine. Hopper has no resistance. Yes, accountant detective. So I heard that you found something very interesting. So what was that thing that you have, uh, you found? Okay, so it's not like a clue. Um, but actually, you know, I I'm still not entirely sure. I can trust you. So I am an inspector. You you understand? And he slowly rips off the mustache. It is me, Inspector Cecilus. <laughs> I'm the inspector that you're working with. Uh, and he puts it back on. This is just a disguise. I am still the same person. I understand that it is very difficult to follow, but it, it is me, and you can trust me. <laughs> no, I I I I know. <laughs> Uh, look, I, I won't do anything to hinder your investigation. You're probably on the up and up, but I, I, I feel kind of weird about sharing any findings with a stranger. So I'm just going to go not do that over there. Oh, oh okay. I, I completely understand. Just, uh, no, I completely understand your need. Uh, just. Oh, no, Hopper feels bad. Um, <laughs> he, he looks, he looks a little sad and he's like, I just, uh. I, I, uh, I, no, I, pl I plan for us to work together. I, I didn't want to add you to my suspect list, but if that is the kind of suspicions that you want to do and you want to be added onto my suspect list, I can absolutely do that. That's not quite, that's not what I said. No, I didn't mean to offend. Just you can't be too careful in this line of work. I, I understand that you cannot be too careful, but you have to understand the importance of allies as well. I didn't understand that until some years ago, but now that I have very close allies that I work with, it has really changed my life. Do you have a team with you on the ship? My, my team is my team is always with me. Yes. Hopper like looks around to see if there's he's like visibly like with a posse or if he's referring to like a like a phone or like a Bluetooth thing or something. Uh, no. All you see, he it looks like he is pointing to himself when he says my team. Okay. He like pointing to his chest. 
look, um, maybe if we got to know each other better, we could work together more effectively. Um, I don't know how many people are supposed to be to a cooking station, but do you want to come join me and my friend over there? Join you with your cooking station? Investigations? Multiples of us together? Investigating the food? Going on the investigation of how to put food together? That's the best way to learn investigations. I will happily do that. But it seems like your friend is preoccupied. Maybe we should stay here for this time. Is Misha still pouting in the corner? Let's go over to Misha. So Misha, you make your way to your station and you're pouting. They haven't even noticed that Hop has been yanked back. They are just really <laughs> upset. And suddenly, uh, you, you notice that there... Oh, is there something you want to do? Well, no, I wasn't saying, like, if there's something, like, that obviously doesn't match together at their station, like, I don't know, cilantro and, like, chocolate, they're just, like, putting it together. Like, <laughs> you're just already <laughs> starting cooking. <laughs> so you're slamming it together, and you just hear a voice uh, lean over to you and say, Ooh, cilantro and chocolate, a particularly devious combination. Misha will turn around and say, oh, salutations, Le Adrian with an apostrophe. I would be quite honest, I have not an idea of what am I doing, but I believe that combining these foods together is what you humans term cooking, so I have made my first food. And then you show the concoction to Le Adrian. Uh, they're <laughs> going to look at you and just uh, grab their spoon and say, might I? Oh, certainly. I do not know how well it will taste, but you certainly can be my first uh, taster. All right, they dip in the spoon and they put it in their mouth and they sour up and they say, this is absolutely atrocious. <laughs> Raw, impressive cruelty lies within this concoction. Not similar to dark magics. You're not familiar with those at all, are you? Oh, uh, well, I... Do not believe I am. I suppose you could teach me more about that. I am confused as you seem approving of my cooking, even though you said it was atrocious. So you're certainly a very curious individual. <laughs> to make things good, you have to know how to make them bad. And to understand esoteries, you have to understand all sides of them. Oh. You, do you know? He's just going to cut to the chase and say, I'm just going to cut to the chase. <laughs> I heard the companion you were with last night is a nano. Might you have those abilities as well? Oh, I am also a nano. Yes, I could sense that. And um, suddenly, Misha, you see around you like rainbow coloring of light. And they say, almost like a radiant light surrounding you. And the light leaves from you, and it extends out into his hand, and um, they turn mm. into a pair of tickets. These are very fake tickets for a very real event. If you and your companion were interested, I think you in particular would make oh, the most devious of opponents. And he sets the ticket down in front of you. Uh, can I, can we should like inspect the tickets? Like I want to see what this event is. Yes. So you go to touch it and it disappears and it like your hand goes through it. It looks mm. like this is almost an illusion. Almost an illusion. <laughs> and it seems to be for an event being held in a room. Let me find what room I'm going to. I sort of want it to be in the courtyard. Ooh, that sounds fun. That's what I want personally as a human. And also I said that while leaning way away from the mic. I do apologize. Oh, that's fine. So you see tickets for an event in the courtyard tonight called nano fight club oh and then it might say it might say at the bottom all kinds of characters welcome <laughs> uh misha would look at that and say oh a club that sounds fun i believe i could go uh and i could bring my other companions as well are you going to be in this event well my body will be there but i don't think Le Adrian will be. Oh, that is an interesting... Do you... Could you explain what that means? Come tonight, and I promise you'll find the truest villain on this ship. Hmm. I will do so then. And Le Adrian walks away. I, I, I was just going to say that as Misha watches him walk away, they kind of, like, squint a little, and then they, like, they're, like, thinking of uh, something that would, like, 
look good with that walking like uh, stance and then like just make a mental note of bringing something specific to give L- Adrian later. All right. So you acclimate yourself in class. Hop, are you going to stay with, uh, are, what are you going to do now that you see uh, La Adrian has left Misha? Um, now that Ladrian has left Misha, Hop's going to say, look, my friend isn't really excited about this class, so I think I should partner up with them, at least for the first day. But again, I don't know how many people are supposed to be at a cooking station, so you, you could just join us. We could be a, a team of three. I, I would really like that. Okay, good. Yeah, that's uh, Misha leading Cecilos over to the back. You remember Cecilos? Um, he's going to cook with us. Oh, salutations, Inspector Cecilos. You're very welcome to cook with Simon Scotch as I watch. <laughs> <laughs> I made efforts to include you. Uh, I, I have already cooked my concoction. I don't believe I need to do anything else. And they are going to just show their uh, cilantro filled with chocolate. Cecilos is going to say, oh, you have already figured out the mystery of this cooking class. Very interesting. And he dips his finger in and licks it and says, oh, there is something quite sinister on this boat indeed. <laughs> And so you get ready for class. And after a few moments, the door slams open and this furious middle-aged man with a like a, a rock-like face, bald head and a bushy golden beard comes storming in and he gets up into class and he says, all right, none of you students wanted to be in this class. And frankly, I didn't want to teach it either. My name is Professor Gary Goldstone and you can call me nothing. <laughs> All right, I'm going to run this class, and you none of you pipsqueaks are going to make a squeak. You got that? All right, so the first thing we got to do is we got to take our ingredients and... And suddenly it gets quiet. And Goldstone, Professor Gary Goldstone, turns and he looks to Hop. Well, now, look what the sesky dragged in. Hopper, as soon as this man walked in the door, has been, like, fixing his collar slowly, like, farther up his face. And attempts to make him look slightly different. You know Professor Nothing? Um, we've crossed paths. It was a long time ago. A long time ago. Feels like yesterday. Does it? That I caught the no good, rootin' tootin', book-thieving nemesis of the University of Key. Everyone meet our most prolific criminal. Kiapa Scotch. Realigning the uh the common metal neurons uh uh-huh. to to create life <laughs> to create synapses between the cells um don't you dare out jargon me kyle <laughs> he's not though he's just naming words that exist i'm just trying to like do are you trying to do a personal attack against like... i'm trying to do neuroscience as hard as i can yeah this is just a personal attack <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, Ari, tell us of the AI neuroscience. Uh, you just use a whole lot of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog protein. That's very important. <laughs> That's a real thing that exists. It's Sonic Hedgehog, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, Kyle. Hey, 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 hey. One billion years, he got the the. <laughs> if only after the great Sonic copyright war of the fifth world. Many lives were lost. <laughs> and, and and so I assume that the screwdriver now it's just a screwdriver, even though technically it's a sonic screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> Ari wins the jargon battle. She just wins. Damn. Also, Hallie, I'm just gonna let you know I have no planned time for Ness to come back. Oh, okay. So just whenever He's going to. Yeah, just whenever have him come back. Okay. I just imagine like the very finale happens, Vare is about to <laughs> kill Shock, and then just suddenly a backpack to the head. Thwack! And Ness appears. I need him to fix my electron arthroscope. Back <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, that was Batool I used to fix him. Damn it. Whatever. <laughs> And before we continue, let's get up. <laughs> let's just take a moment to appreciate what Ari said. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'd like, like to. Start. I'm sorry, I'd like doesn't even mean anything to me, but it just. 
I just fucking lost it. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I, so Kyle asked uh, Emily if like Ellie was feeling the magic. And so I typed, are you feeling <laughs> and just broke Tom? He has no context for that even. <laughs> are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? <laughs> I just read it in SpongeBob's voice and it was automatically funny. <laughs> Oh, I'm so I'm so happy. Oh, I'm gonna be able to breathe soon. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to share this clip when we're done. I pulled it up. It's very good. Oh, are you feeling it now, Mister? Now, Mister Krabs. Are you feeling it? The more you say it, the more I laugh. Oh. Are you feeling it now, Mister Krabs? Are you feeling it now, Mister Krabs? Are you feeling it? Are you feeling it now, Mister Krabs? Are you feeling it now, Mister Krabs? After that, feeling it now, Mister Krabs.